Hi, um, I just want to chat today about how we bring a lower jaw forward in what we call a class 2B. Uh, class 2B means that the lower jaw is behind the upper jaw, uh, and rather than pull the front teeth back, which changes the profile, we bring the lower jaw forward, which improves the profile, helps the bite, and also helps airway, because uh, children who have a recessive lower jaw tend to have more chance of uh, sleep disorder breathing problems as they get older. Okay? Now, uh, th this is young Jeff, and Jeff is eight and a half, right? Okay. And Jeff's had a, a Mara, which I want to talk to you about. That's my number one way of moving the lower jaw forward. Now, if you look where Jeff started, quite a severe overjet. And uh, when I went to orthodontic school many years ago, we were taught that was buck teeth. And, and we would take out two teeth in the top and we'd push the top teeth back. But really that's not fixing the problem at hand, which is the lower jaw being um, recessive. So we use an appliance called a Mara. So what a Mara is, uh, it's an upper and lower appliance. And as the patient closes, uh, you can see an elbow and an arm, okay? Now the um, uh, elbow, which is in the top, guides the lower part, the arm, and brings the jaw forward, all right? So if we come back here to Jeff, we can see how nicely Jeff's bite looks now, right? Uh, so he no longer has that recessive lower jaw, and he's got a good positioning of the upper and lower. So we've started today with some partial braces to resolve the um, anterior crowding. You can see Jeff's Mara in place there. Um, I'm just opening again, Jeff. Okay, and now bite together. Now, as he bites, can you see how it brings his jaw forward? So this constant stimulation of the lower jaw actually helps remodel the TMJ, so you get stable correction of the class two um, bite relationship. So again, um, just open nice and wide there for me. If we look at the uh, upper arch, you can see I put in a, a wire that helps me to expand. We uh, call it a transpalatal arch or a TPA. So in the upper using a TPA, I can widen the jaw. Most kids who have a recessive lower jaw will also have a narrow upper jaw. So we widen the upper jaw using this part of the appliance, just bite together, and then you can see the lower jaw has advanced forward, uh, and, um, and that helps us get the bite corrected. So what Jeff has left to do in his phase one therapy, open again, uh, next visit, we're going to put four brackets on the lower incisors to level and align them, bite together again. Uh, we'll get our center lines on, we'll get the proper torque of the upper and lower incisors, uh, an ideal interincisal angle. We'll take the Mara off and um, we wean children off the Mara by just wearing elastics to hold the jaw before we go to a retainer. And the retainer that Jeff will have is called a bionator, and he'll wear it at home and at night till he loses all his um, baby teeth. Knowing, number one, we have room for the adult teeth. Number two, he's caught up back with good facial balance and good growth of the jaw. So to summarize, this is called phase one intervention, and it's for young children who have um, a class two jaw, in other words, a, a recessive lower jaw. Uh, and by doing it early, you can balance the face as well as straighten the teeth. Whereas if you wait till the kid has all the adult teeth and the lower jaw has no growth potential, then it does become an extraction case and you end up having to pull this back. Whereas the real problem is the lower jaw. And um, if you want more information uh, on the Mara, I'm happy to send you a, um, a couple of articles that uh, show how you would fit it, how you adjust it. Um, so that uh, more people can offer this to, to, their, to their patients.